Well, first of all, we need breakthroughs to enable it. Uh, with the current statistics for safety and for cost, you're not going to be sending people to orbit until there's breakthroughs that make big improvements in cost and safety. So what I showed here was just an idea of what I think would be a good uh, first entry of a resort hotel in orbit and combining the, uh, uh, the Von Braun ring and, and the zero G facility. But um, I, I, you can't predict a breakthrough. I'll tell you one thing, you will not get a breakthrough if you don't try. And what that means is you've got to try something that, that most people think will not work. You've got to have confidence in what seems like nonsense. Uh, if that's not done, we'll have another four decades of no progress. Well, let's, let's solve the problems first. I'm not, I'm not in the uh, space line business. You might address um, uh, that to uh, Richard Branson, maybe. Uh, although I, I was involved in several studies for the suborbital uh, business, and uh, the, uh, the business plan worked out that we'd build about 40 spaceships and about 15 launch airplanes and have um, uh, launch facilities in um, about six or seven worldwide locations and that uh, roughly you'd fly about 100,000 people the first 12 years after you get started. And, you know, the fact there's been less than 500 people leave the atmosphere in all these years, uh, 100,000 is a small number for airlines, but, but I think that's doable uh, in suborbital flights. Again, we don't have the breakthroughs that are needed to make a plan, a business plan for orbital. Uh, flight. Uh, I think you've got to solve that problem. You've got to find out how, how, how much you can do to make it more affordable. Uh, obviously, if it's, if it's lower cost, there'll be more people fly. Obviously, it should. Uh, the fact that Soyuz is still being flown uh, since the 60s indicates to an observer uh, that Russia doesn't go out and take risks and try new things that may not work. Uh, I'm shocked that Russia hasn't gone to the moon yet. I mean, they send a robot to the moon at the same time as Apollo went there. And yet, uh, why is it taken so long to go to the moon? Why, why isn't Russia on Mars? Why isn't America or someone else, uh, you know, um, uh, I, we've done a little bit, a tiny amount of robotic exploration. And uh, I think that's been a real negative in that back, uh, back when I was uh, a youngster, Mars was a lot more interesting place to go than it is now. Let me say that again. Mars was a lot more interesting place in the 1950s than it is now. And the reason is, we didn't know what was there. We saw the colors change and we concluded that there were plants there. Uh, we were guessing that there were probably animals there. We were further guessing that, gee, maybe they're, maybe they've made canals, maybe they're intelligent. Uh, the, the bottom line is, uh, the more we found out about Mars, the less we want to go. I, however, there's, there's uh, the biggest chance that there's, uh, that there's interesting places are the moons of the giant planets. Uh, there's, um, I think, five or six uh, uh, planets or moons in the solar system that have oceans. Uh, the Earth is the only one that has an ocean at the surface. But there's oceans out there, and where there's oceans, there may be there may be life, maybe interesting life. I'm surprised that with all the progress that we've made in enablers, you know, sensors, navigation, the fact that we can precisely fly by Pluto. Uh, by the way, Pluto had a piece of Spaceship One on it when it 
uh, New Horizons had a had a piece of Spaceship One on it when it flew by Pluto uh, uh, several months ago. Um, I'm surprised that we haven't parlayed that and done a lot more exploration.